Hello everyone, and welcome back to the kingdom. So last episode we got our double blaze farm working very well. Very pleased with that, that was a really fun project, I really enjoyed doing that. It took a very long time, but you guys seem to like it on the likes it seems. But yes, we have our double blaze farm, and that's great. Unfortunately though, we've been talking to Dinderbone since then, about the change 1.7. And the main thing is that because of terrain update, Things like witch huts and any other structure in a biome, so nether fortresses, witch huts, anything like that, maybe even slime chunks, will all be changed in the 1.7. So the most likely scenario at the moment is that we will lose the witch farm completely. It will just disappear, it may be relocated, it may go somewhere else, or it may just completely disappear from the biome. So that's unfortunate. Now on Hermitcraft server we're talking about maybe we would look at resetting the nether, because no, the fortresses will stop working as fortresses, therefore if you reset the nether you'll lose everything in the nether but then you'll get new fortresses which will work as fortresses. Now I mentioned this at the end of last episode and I haven't gone and generated the quadruple cross-section fortress that I was thinking of using as a witch, not witch farm, a wither farm. Now I'm still not generating that and I haven't generated a huge amount of my nether or even the overworld because of this update that was coming up. So we we'll have to see what's going to go on for that. Now I did promise before episode 20 we would have a wither farm. We may still have that depending on when the update is. I think it might still be a while off but I don't really want to go build a wither farm and everything else because I'll lose it maybe in the next couple of weeks and that won't be very much fun because that's going to be a very big and very complicated build. So unfortunately this is probably going to go, this witch farm, which will change quite a few things around here. I need to stock up the glowstone things before it would disappear. I don't really want to set up a whole new mob perimeter to make another witch farm. I just don't have the time anymore. But we're going to look at some things today that we can do even if all these terrain changes do make our witch farms and all that disappear because I want to look at things that aren't specific to them. So I'll keep the wither farm on hold just for the moment. I'm still going to design one at some point though. So we'll start on some produce farms today and also I want to do a slime farm but because of things changing I'm not sure how related it is but the slime chunks may change as well. They're actually locations so I have one here, here and actually one behind that in the corner as well. So that one behind the corner will be near enough away to be a good sort of slime farm and as you can see I've kind of cleared out most of this area around here which looks quite nice. So sign farm might hold off for right now but I want to start making the produce farm so I've got my little nano farm here which is just for the wheat, the carrot and the potato and I've got a whole lot of other farms I've been designing, little tiny ones, no sugar cane and all that all going along. So I'll start putting some of them in today and I think we made the slime farm anyway because I can get it to run for enough time to get enough slime before I actually need to think about moving it or anything else because I've designed one which is pretty good and I can turn it on and off. So I can turn it off and then it won't interfere with the witch farm which would be great. So now I'm going to start making the first little farm for today and I'll be right back. Okay so I did some more planning and we got over here now. So what I said before I wanted to have sort of produce up there and kind of animal farms up there when we kind of trying to work out, for quite a while actually trying to work out how I want to actually make this interior because I wanted to kind of seal off that whole area there to a potion sort of farm place here and just have the actual UI sort of um, player interface around the front same way as I've got the interface sort of here and the rest would then be covered up including the covering up of all the hoppers so it would be kind of a cavern interior but over here I had kind of cleared out a huge amount of area and just left it cleared out no real boundaries or walls or anything so I'm thinking of doing this I've got a little cross section here which goes the produce on this side and I'm thinking I'll do the animal farms on that side and then if I use a slime farm over there then it'll kind of fit into that area as well and then I've got some other farms I'll do some other places but we won't work at them today so over here I've set up um, I'm actually going to move this farm, it was down there um, just a wheat, carrot and potato farm um, works fine, I just AFK there a couple of seconds a minute ago when I was on the phone, got a load of potatoes from that so that is 
a decent way to get some food at the moment. Use AFK for a couple of minutes, and that is your food for quite a long time. And I've got to set up this one as well. It's one of the things I've been playing with in creative on test worlds and things. This is my little sugarcane farm. It's a fully automatic thing, does some sugarcane, not massively high output. And what it basically does is the whole thing grows as it grows. And then there is a little piston in the back there. Have I got a silk touch on me? Yes, I do. I've got a silk touch here. Let's go this. And we'll just break one of these. Basically, there is a sensor at the back here. There isn't a gap. Sensor back here that goes. And then it makes them all go. Then a cart comes from underneath and then takes those stuff off the floor and then puts them into a chest in here. So that works okay at the moment and that'll be fine, that'll keep running no, there's no problem with that at all um, so yeah, once it's been going for a little while there'll be loads of sugar cane I don't really need much sugar cane ever I only need it for books and paper really I may make a bigger farm if I want to do some sort of trading and that slime is annoying me hello, goodbye I may make a big one at some point if I want to do a trading farm, but I'll do that somewhere else. I wouldn't do it here because I've got my villagers for the iron farm. This is just for really books and things for enchantments and everything else that I will do. So it doesn't need to be too insane. But I set up a thing over here for the farms I want to produce over here, just for the produce. Um, so I've got a seed farm I want to do. I've already designed one of them. And I'll just plonk that in, same as I've done with this over here. That goes over here. All these should be going over here somewhere. So anything that I make which is produced and is organic, really, um, not sort of directly mob related. So vines, cocoa beans. I want to do a separate farm for cocoa beans. I didn't want to use one of these for it. I'll do something different because I want the cocoa beans as actual wool dyes. So I'd want lots of them, not just a little machine for them. And I've got Netherwart Farm I want to do over here, Cactus Farm, and these are mostly just for dyes, the cactus, the flowers and all that, so we need a lot for the dyes, as I don't really want to do a sheep farm because you kind of need quite a few sheep to get a decent sheep farm going, and I'd rather not have the entities here if I don't have to. If I can make all the dyes, and I've got a silk farm, well, string farm anyway, with three spawners, so I don't really need to kind of scavenge for wool from sheep, I can just get tons of it from that and then just dye it to whatever colour I need makes more practical sense, it's more farms, I get more farms out of it and to do mushroom farms, they should be fun uh, red mushroom is basically useless on the most part, but brown is good for potions so I'll make an automatic farm for both of them at some point and melon and pumpkin another thing I thought maybe sort of a one cow trap to just get milk for if I want to make cakes I can not really think of many more for a produce area then do the same sort of grid on the other side with farms for these, so including squid, slime, like a slime will be over there or something if I do it. Squid farm, fish farms. So fish will change in 1.7, so I probably won't make a farm for that yet. Um, and just some other bits around. So yeah, I've got to get on now. I'm going to start putting in... I'll put in the seed farm first, actually, because I already have that designed for quite a few weeks now, actually. I'll just plonk it in somewhere. Not sure where, maybe here, and work my way around for the extra farm. So, I'll be back when the seed farm is done to give you a little quick show. Okay, so the seed and flower farm is in. Let's go have a look. <laughs> I've probably shown this by now a separate video, so I won't go over it at all really. But seeds come out here, flowers come out here. Basically, the only real use of this is for yellow flowers. Um, so, I get the red flowers from the iron farm, and seeds. Mm, you don't really need seeds for much so yeah basically yellow flowers basically all this does is bone mills this bit in the middle it's green because we're in a swamp shifts back and forth dislodges them minecarts underneath come along and pick the stuff up basically that when it's on it's on see things go back and forth so and then we stop it and then things will come along when it's off everything is off nothing moves the minecarts stop moving and this elevator will keep going until all the things are through and then it'll stop as well that's basically that and the bone mill goes in the top so yeah fairly simple that's that one done now what farms we've got left to do which I want to do today I'm not sure I want to do any of these 
more today. I think we may do the slime farm though, because I really don't feel up for a big, impressive looking build, because it's all going to be very dark here at the moment, because I haven't kind of settled out how big the whole room is going to be. When I've done that, then I can put in things like lava roof lighting and all sorts of different things to work out all of that. But for the moment, it's going to be kind of dark, so I do apologise on the video. But in my opinion, I quite like it being dark and ominous. Anyway, let's work out where I want the slime farm, and then I'll be right back. Okay, so I located where I want my slime farm. I made another piece, this cross section, going to the kind of mob farm and everything else. Now I need to work out where I want the slime farm to be located. So I've got a number of slime chunks around here. I've got one here, denoted by the inside bit to this square, where these are the corners, saying there's one here. Now they went really far enough away from this cross section to be very good. Because I need the whole chunk itself, the 16 by 16, plus a 3 around the whole thing. So it would actually be, in total, it's 16 for that, 3 on each side, so it's actually 22 by 22 square. And that would have been a bit messy to have right in the middle of this area. Because the aim is probably going to be just to have the central bit of collection from different mob farms to come to it. So if you're standing around here, you want the actual farm to be active. And you've got to be more than 24 blocks away from the pads for the actual slime to spawn. So I decided to use this one in here, which I've gone and mined out by hand. I don't really use much TNT because, in actual fact, efficiency 5, and that's my mouse going, and that's it back. Efficiency 5 pickaxes and a haste 2 beacon is much faster than using TNT, and much cleaner as well. So I've actually smoothed out all the walls and did that all nicely. She'll call a torch laying here for some reason. Now, to get this to work, I had to oh. circumnavigate something, so be right back. Okay. So my mouse has been giving me some problems lately, the drive was a bit annoying, and that's why the coming in and out USB sound is coming on sometimes, I can't really help that. So this is the slime chunk it seems, and this actually in between the iron trench part, so the main body of it is over here, like so. And the wiring did go along this tunnel, all the way along here, into this one over here, which then did the rest of the actual farm itself. Now, because I wanted my sign chunk right in the middle, I had to circumnavigate it by putting the wiring along this bit down here. It comes out down the bottom and then joins up around the whole thing. So that's not actually going to be a problem, so that's fine. Now for this farm, I'm going to do a one you could turn on and off, because in my first Let's Play world, I had a sign farm which had a one layer only, and that produced too much slime for everything just with one layer and this can produce maybe 10 stacks an hour or something of slime so having loads and loads and loads of pads is not an important thing in the slightest I'm never going to be able to use more than maybe a couple of hours worth of fully running speed so it's not really a big consideration my mob perimeter is good enough such that the spawns would be good enough to produce enough so I'm going to be doing a design which I did some testing on and did a video on recently. It's going to be just a six floor design most likely with a flushing system of water on each one. Um, just so you can turn all the pads off on demand so the slimes will stop spawning. Which will also stop interfering with the witch farm and anything else around here that I'm doing. So that is the whole thing mined out. That's good. Now I'm going to put in the water streams first and the first spawning pad. Make sure we do this first to make sure everything above that works fine. Now, for this, I need a controlling tower. Basically, it's just a little tower on one corner. And from that, there's going to be a piston with some resonant blocks on each level, which then extend and activate everything on each level, which then turning on the flushing mechanism or turn it off. So I'm going to work out where to put that as well. And put the water down the bottom to make sure they can all come to one point to die. Should be cool. So I'm going to do that, and I'll be right back. Okay, I guess it's time for an update. I have made a nice big cage around the actual levels that I want to use for the spawning pads, so I can actually make this into a nice really freestanding cage, and kind of sit from the outside, put a nice little roof on it, and it'll be its own structure. 
Now I've used iron bars here just for looks really and really when slimes do fall down they should be able to make their way off this little ledge here. If not then there might be some problems but hopefully they can make their way off and then down into water streams below. Now these are completely flat so let's go down here. All the water is on the bottom level so it moved them from there all the way along down up and keep moving all the slimes across into this little bit here and then go up to here and go into lava blade this lava blade will split them up into one by one slimes and then they will fall down a little gap there and die from full damage now i've had quite a few come through already and there's probably loads of slime in the hoppers i've got collecting and the control tower is going to be in this corner over here so i need to wire up a nice long bit of wiring from a switch over there all the way along down and into the bottom of this should be a problem just be uh, a bit of a annoying thing to set up really <laughs> it's gonna make sure I don't kind of disturb at a later point but it shouldn't be that bad down here it goes down lava blade soul sand to make sure they don't hop around and they're going to there let's see how many are in here oh that's another bits as well so there's quite a few stacks come through already just from one little pad running for a little bit um, I didn't really mean for it to be running but uh, it's going to be running anyway oh there's a slime there, we can see that one come across if he path runs correctly which he isn't I don't have my bow and arrow on me ok so each pad is going to be like this um, gold blocks because of my gold farm, if you're new I have a very big gold farm enough said I'm going to do a 4 gap between each layer so the 3x3 three three slimes can jump around we'll just hit him off actually um, so the 3x3 three three slimes can jump around in the 4 high gap and each pad is actually going to be 2 blocks thick so I have one bottom layer of it which will be providing the water for the layer below and the actual pad on top of that bit will then be where they're going to spawn on top of so i explain that very, very soon um, in a minute when I go onto a clip where I've got some of the layers done to show you um, but I'll show you this going in first it will hop along yep, they have lots of fun there and they come across and they die so it's pretty simple nice to use now from that I've got hoppers going down to the bottom like you saw I'm going to have a minecart every now and then with a really long hopper timer just going down there picking them up and then coming back to a chest on the surface somewhere I might have it in the middle sort of when you come in there to be a little slime face and you get a chest of slime or might be somewhere else I don't really know haven't really got to that point yet um, but yeah this goes all the way up and it should be nice so I'm going to start putting in the in actual floors. I'll set up the first floor how I want to do it. It's going to be different to what I've done before I think. I'm going to edit it a bit and then I'll put in the first bit of control tower and I'll wire that out and we'll give it a little test on the first pad. So I'll see you in a bit. Okay true to form I may have done a bit more progress than I said I would but oh well. <laughs> so all the pads are now in all six of them all flushing mechanisms are built in as well in the bottom part of the pad. I changed outside to give fence gates to the loads of signs which I had in my little concept model. Now fence gates work the same but I get less things needed to be to hold the water in. Yes there's more parts of them to render so not better than signs. I could use signs across and be a little bit better on that but I like how these look. So basically all the floors are lit up from above with the glowstone. And I've used gold, yep, I've used gold for my gold farm. I spent quite a few hours AFKing overnight to get enough gold for all the pads, but it definitely looks good. I like it, it looks nice and clean. The control tower is now done, so all the water system is automatic um, if I just press the button. So that's the farm on. Now I've got too much slime through already. Um, <laughs> I've got some here for building it, and I've got about the same again down there in a chest from there coming across. So. I don't really want this running very often at all, if ever. It's just meant to be something that looks nice. Um, it's been a little problem though, because I've used this here to give it a nice seeing effect to the signs that need to use glass. They do get stuck on the edge here, which means they probably need to extend this um, actual bars down right to the bottom, um, so they don't get stuck on anything. I can do that; it's not really an issue. Um, at the moment, though, I'm thinking. Because I can turn it off automatically, I'll just turn it off here like so. The water will come down with some nice flat wiring and turn it all off. Nothing can spawn now at all. Excellent. 
Lovely. I think it looks pretty nice as well. Nice and sleek, not touching on the sides. I like it. I think it looks good. There's this main aim to look nice in the world. Let's turn it back on. So, what I wanted to do was have a way of turning this on and off without needing me to press button because that's a bit lazy and. yeah. What I'd rather have is a self stocking chest. So, when this is full, say, just for example, this bit of chest, the chest is probably going to be up there somewhere because we're actually underneath the floor level of this area. So, say when the chest is full, and then it will send a signal to the farm to say, okay, we've got enough slime, turn the farm off. Then when I come along and take some slime out, it will then say, oh, we got room for some slime, or we need more slime. It turn itself back on and fill itself back up. So that would be a really cool thing to have, just a self-filling slime chest as such. Um, could be really nice to use. So what I've got to do is put in a sensor system, and I've got to work out that. That is the next point I've got to do. But this is working very, very well. I'll show you down here. It's got some more slime in there from it coming through. And um, the wiring comes down to the back. Little diode here just makes the signal a little bit longer just to make sure that everything works correctly because there is some issues when you're going through lots of resin torches and things of the orders which they go and the pistons bugging out and lots of things. Um, so this goes up in a little tower, turns all the pistons on. Actually, I can take this one away here. That was only a scaffolding tower, but oh well. So that is is a generally quite a simple thing. Um, the actual redstone on it is quite nice because it's all one layer thick underneath the bottom bit of the pad. It's like so, but they just go under there actually. So it comes from the corner. This one extends, turns this one on, push them all across, turns each bit on or off, and then when they retract again or go the opposite way they then turn the thing on. So this one here will retract and then extend when the pulse comes. When it extends then it will turn it on. That's why they don't all go on exactly the same time. And it's just easier that way. i just show that they don't go on exactly the same time. Those ones on and then those ones on. It's like so. I think it's good. Yep. So what we'll do now is set up this wiring for the automation. Then I won't need a thing up here at all. Let's have a chest at the top and a sensor down the bottom. So I'm going to get on with that and I'll see you again in a bit. And this is just bugged. <laughs> okay, so it's done. Slime's come down, you've seen that already. They go through the bottom, they come into the minecart. You can't see this bit yet. The minecart then comes up. Up it goes like so. Up the hill tower. Comes to here, drops its items off. Goes into a drop of Vader into the chest. Now, for this, to make it completely automatic, I've got the whole part of this where oh, I actually got some cobble in here somewhere. Um, once this is all filled up and it backs all the way through the drop of Vader and into this hopper here, when this hopper's got more than it's about half a stack or so of items into here, more than 23, then from this it will give a two signal from this, which goes into this repeater, which goes all the way down to the bottom which then goes to a double sort of flip-flop pulse generator thing uh, cobbled together. So let's chuck some cobble in here to show this. When this gets too high, so if there's a whole backup of slime through the system, then the water turns on. Now, when that then depletes, and uh, I've taken items out of the chest, so there's actually room in it, those items in the hopper reduce below 23, and then the whole system should then turn the water back off. And we'll just see if that works. Yes, it does, because there is room in the chest still. So that's that done. Now, I'm really pleased with that. I'd sort out the whole problem with slimes getting stuck on the edges. I'll just make this go all the way down to the bottom um, with the extra iron bars. But in principle, that's it finished for today. Um, I'm quite pleased with this. I see it starts sorting out a little bit to lag around the world because they are building up quite badly. And this one things that can be shut down in the meantime, I can leave it on automatic or I can just turn it off. Either way, I've got enough slime balls to do anything for the moment, so it's not really any problem at all. So yeah, I think that is going to wrap it up for today. Um, I'll just show you down here what's happening. So, signal comes down from the top, comes to this, also turns this minecart off. Same sort of things I had on my furnace system. So when there is stuff in here, 
and the chest is full, then it will stop sending this minecart back up because you don't need it after that. But when there's room, then it will turn this to be able to let the minecart go again. Um, this even comes down to here to the double flip flop pulsionary to thing. It will either send a pulse from this one, or if it changes state, then it will send a pulse from the other side, comes to the middle, and goes along to the rest of the circuit. So it's fully automatic. I'm quite pleased with this. A couple of things I know to work out and make it look more pretty, but that is it in principle. So yeah, I'm quite pleased with today. We've got a lot of farms done, and I will show you something before we do finish today. Um, because I spent a long time doing this, I've had that sugar cane farm running. And then you probably questioning in the beginning, oh, it's not going to give much sugar cane. Well, it's definitely given enough already. <laughs> so yeah, it it, tw it twandles along and it keeps going. The whole point of these, they're meant to be kind of less laggy. So on this, only one piston, so therefore they only go off at a less interval, but they get more harvest in each go. That's not kind of principle I'm trying to work into everything here. Trying to make them as least laggy as possible so we can keep this storage system going. So yeah, I think that's really good progress. I think we're going to sort out some more farms for next time or look into the wither farm to see what update we're on then. I don't think we're going to be anywhere near a snapshot though to see anything change so we can't really do that soon. But anyway, I hope you've enjoyed. So I'll see you next time and I'm out guys.